Welcome back, everyone. So I'm very pleased to open the uh, next part of this discussion on the energy transition. Uh, we have a distinguished panel here to speak today, and what they will do is each give you a few words of information, and then we'll follow that by a discussion. So let me just briefly introduce, and you can see more details in the panel, uh, Stephen Chu is a professor at Stanford University, uh, former Secretary of Energy, Granger Morgan, who is the Hammerschlag University professor at Carnegie Mellon University and co-director of the Center for Climate and Energy Decision-Making. Jay Apt, a professor at Carnegie Mellon University and co-director of the CMU Electricity Industry Center. Sonia Glavatsky, who is a program director at the Advanced Research Projects Agency for Energy, specializing in electric power systems and formerly the control systems group leader from United Technologies Research Center. Francis O'Sullivan, who is Director of Energy Research at the MIT Energy Initiative, and Ashley Finn, who is the Policy Director of the Nuclear Innovation Analyst and the Director of Nuclear Innovation at the Clean Air Task Force. So each of them will be saying a few words. I was going to start with just a brief introduction because I thought it was important to point out that while this session is entitled Energy Transition, you shouldn't think that energy transition is a singular event. The energy system has been changing for as long as humanity has been burning wood. Uh, and in particular, over the last 150, 200 years, we, will, we see that the energy system has changed dramatically on time scales of decades. And I just wanted to illustrate this with a picture of the transitions that have taken place in the United States back through 1850, at which time we got almost all of our energy by burning biomass, largely wood. In the late part of the 19th century, we started mining a lot of coals as part of a transformation of our agrarian society into an industrial society. About that same time, oil was discovered in Pennsylvania. It does not show up on this chart until early part of the next century. Uh, at first, oil was primarily used for lighting, and the advent of oil largely disrupted the whaling industry but it had its real impact when we started to have the development of inexpensive mass-produced automobiles. And so you see in the early part of the 1900s, the yellow growth of oil as a significant part of our energy system. At that same time, we were seeing another change in our energy system, which was the advent of massive electrification. So there, coal had another market. In addition to providing heat for industry, coal began powering providing electrical uh, generation. And as oil was developed, oil and natural gas, which is another byproduct, uh, became a competitor with coal in providing both heat for the industry and electrical power. And that oscillation and balance between oil and gas and coal continued with small continuing amounts of, nat of hydropower and continuing use of biomass until around the um, uh, the mid part of the 20th century, oil and gas were dominant in providing most of this, uh, of this energy, but oil and gas prices became unstable, more expensive, and we began to be worried about the amount of natural gas available in the United States. So we saw a, a, a transition, a back transition, where coal use started to grow again. We actually restricted the use of natural gas for electric power generation. Coal started growing to be a larger part of our energy mix. And at the same time, up on the top, you can see another transition taking place. After decades of research and development, nuclear power began to be a very important part of our energy system. These transitions continued until the early part of this century when we saw something else happen, which was the development of a new approach to producing natural gas, uh, hydraulic fracturing, and the development of a very large resource of natural gas. And at that point, the price of natural gas became decoupled from the price of oil, became very low, became competitive, uh, more than competitive with coal, and so we started to immediately see the use of coal for electric power generation and for industry going down. Uh, the natural gas uh, changes have also impacted nuclear power, as we'll hear later on. And then finally, up at the top, 
you can see another transition that's been taking place again as a result of many decades of research and development. You can see that biomass remains actually a significant part of our energy system. And just below biomass, you can see wind and it's a little bit hard to see wind is a lighter shade of brown and solar, which is a dark blue. We're starting to see wind and solar become significant parts of our energy system and especially significant parts of our electric power system. Uh, to put that in context, I'll just say that this is all of our energy use. Our electric power system uses about 38 or 40 percent of our primary energy. And within the electric power system, Today, nuclear energy provides about 20% of our electricity, and renewables, wind, solar, hydro, and biomass provide a little bit less than 20%. So we are seeing a transformation. Uh, much of it is driven by natural market forces, and a lot of it is also driven by very urgent and real concern about climate change and carbon dioxide emissions. And I'll just put up some numbers to remind you. Atmospheric CO2 concentrations have been going up very rapidly. We would like to stabilize them uh, well into this century and certainly by the end of this century to prevent the climate from changing out of control in ways that we don't fully understand. And the United States emits today about five or six billion tons of CO2 into the atmosphere every year. And by 2040, we'd like to cut that by a factor of uh, two and a half. And so we have a very lot, big amount of work to do, but energy transitions do happen, they can happen, and they can happen on the time scales that we're interested in. So I'm now gonna turn the uh, table over to our six speakers and we'll go through in rapid order their comments, and then at the end we'll have time for discussion.